And in the business news, the National Bureau of Statistics have shown that the total non-performing loans of real estate and construction firms rose by 33.31 billion naira from 102.74 billion naira at the end of 2018 financial period to 136.05 billion naira as of the end of 2019, um, the latest statistic shows. The non-performing loans of construction firms to the banking sector rose by 34.53 billion naira at the end of 2018 to 86.4 billion naira as of the end of 2019, while the figure for the real estate sector declined slightly by 1.2 billion naira from 50.87 billion naira in 2018 to 49.65 billion naira as of the end of 2019. Now, according to the MBS, the total loans in construction se sector stood at 723.15 billion naira, while the figure for real estate stood at 604.97 billion naira as of the end of 2019. Joining us to shed light on this supposed setback in the real estate sector is the managing director of Realty, Realty Point Limited, Debo Adejana. He's the MD. Good morning. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Adejana. Yeah, good morning. Good no. morning. It's my pleasure to join you. We're happy to have you. These figures released by the MBS predates COVID-19 period. What could have led to this setback? Could it be recklessness on the part of the industry players or is it is, is the fault of the clients? What went wrong? Okay, well, let, let me, I would, um, in answering that, I would like that we just go back memory lane a bit. Um, if we recall, the country actually just came out, or we can say that we are just coming out of a recession, 2016 to 2017. Now, the way the real estate sector plays out is that it's usually a lagger when it comes to recovery. It's usually the first to be hit by economic uh, difficulties and the last to recover. So the real estate sector really is just trying to recover and that is the reflection you are seeing from what uh, we all went through in 2016 and 17. And all around us, if we look at um, vacant structures, abandoned projects, and all of that, they speak to that effect, you know, uh, dwindling sales and all. So that is really what is still happening, you know. That's it. It's not different, really. All right, speak to us about uh, real estate loans. Are they purely residential or commercial, or a mix of both? Well, it's a mixed bag, actually. Um, yes, you can say that if I'm to assert the guess, I would say that, yes, the real estate portion, uh, the residential portion, I mean, could be the larger portion, but usually a mixed bag. You need so construction, finance is usually what feeds the supply, okay? And then the demand sector is majorly maybe driven by the real estate loans, mortgages and all of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, these loans that, you know, we're talking about here, are the pro why are they not uh, being able to uh, repay them to the banks? Is it that the projects are abandoned, you know, help us understand it. Okay, so like I said, um, we're just coming out of recession. So people are still, companies, construction firms, real estate companies are still grappling with uh, dealing with uh, stabilizing their operations, okay? And so some have left site for a while. They're just going back to site now. Some are still trying to restructure, negotiate a restructure, you know? of their loans and all of that. So all of that is still what is happening. Yeah. Of course, some sites are abandoned, like you said. Um, some projects have also failed. We must know that there will be a portion of that uh, that is happening. And then if you really look at that figure and break it down, I mean, those figures that you wield out, uh, you realize that, yes, co while construction is still growing in terms of bad debts, uh, largely because there are a lot of activities in that sector uh, government activities, I would say. You can, you agree with me that the government of the day is very bullish around um, construction, infrastructure. You know, there's been a lot of uh, infrastructure projects going on. So that is feeding the construction 
harm of uh, discussion. But when you look at the real estate figure, uh, there was actually a dip, meaning that uh, supposedly uh, the bad loans got better in a way. But really, I would say that it didn't get better as a result of probably the business environment improving significantly. There is some improvement, but it got better simply because, well, people were just trying to pay down their loans, scale down on their activities, and probably it is only now, just entering 2020, that people were trying to project to doing more business than their COVID, uh, COVID needs. Hmm. All right, with the current pandemic affecting every sector of the economy, yours also included, what's the fate of the real estate? And what are the immediate steps to be taken to cushion this effect? Well, largely, for anybody that is exposed to any loan right now, the major thing to do is uh, restructure. You just have to sit down with your bankers and restructure what it is that you have. Because whilst we're on lockdown and all of that, typically interest rates does not understand lockdown, cannot be locked down. Mm -hmm. So you have to negotiate it down. You have to negotiate your way into what the pandemic has uh, thrown in our faces. So that is very key. You need to negotiate with the banks. You need to sit down with them and negotiate. Also, you need to do, and you need to review your expectations. If there are, are situations where, based on your budget, your projections for the current year, you need to revisit your budget and see whether they are realistic and uh, what you can amend. Also, we need to explore other possibilities because, yes, the economy is hit, but there are some other new discoveries within the value chain, okay, that are really doing well. So every uh, entrepreneur in the construction and the real estate industry, we need to reappraise what it is that we are doing, uh, look at the value chain, look at where there are opportunities right now, because opportunities are just repositioning, as it were. It's not as if they are extinct. So we just need to see where opportunities are in right now and plug into those ones. But most especially, one must be mindful of communication. The advantage of communicating right now is very important. Communicate to your funders, communicate to your customers, communicate with your consultants, communicate with your staff. You know, in managing all of this process, it's very, very important. Whatever you're doing, you need to communicate properly to achieve uh, positive results. And that's what I would be advising any entrepreneur, not just uh, construction or the real estate sector. All right, before I let you go, what are you most hopeful for about your sector, even in the midst of all of this? Okay, so great. Thank you very much. Now, the hope still lies on the fact that, you see, housing is a necessary need. It's a necessary need. So if people can't buy, they still have to rent. It will be difficult for them not to be able to rent. Now, if I can't rent a luxury apartment, I will rent a middle-class apartment or I will rent a low-end apartment, but I must live somewhere. So that's what I mean by opportunities are repositioning. It's not totally, uh, all hopes are not lost. It's not like um, some other sectors or some other products that is totally not useful at this period. No, it is very, very needed still. It's just that the needs and the opportunities are repositioned. And that's what I'm, what I'm glad about uh, when it comes to this sector. Yes. All right, Debo Adejana, thank you so very much for your contributions and keep safe out there. You're welcome. Thank you, you too. My pleasure. Okay.